want to I want to talk a little bit about Millet, uh, partially because there's just a bunch of news that came out over the weekend around Millet, um, and then uh, just on articles. I don't think there's anything revolutionary new that has come out about Millet, but um, I think that it is. Uh, uh, I think that it is. Anyway, a, a lot of stories about how he's doing. I will also be in Argentina a week from today. So I will be in Argentina Monday, Tuesday next week. So I will be able to report to you firsthand about what I observe, the people I talk to. I'll be talking to a lot of Argentinians. I'll be very curious to see what they think and, and, and what they think about um, uh, about uh, Millet and about what's going on in Argentina and how he's doing and so on. So I thought I'd prep you uh, with, with just some, some, a little info about this. Uh, when Millet, uh, you know, win, won the election in uh, late 2023, late last year, U.S. dollar-denominated, dollar-priced uh, Argentinian bonds, that is dollar-priced Argentinian bonds, we're basically trading, uh, you know, south of 30 cents on the dollar, 30 cents on the dollar. And that is basically a reflection of the fact that a lot of people who own those bonds, uh, or a lot of people trading those bonds, did not believe that the Argentinian government would ever pay them back. That is, they were discounting them by 70%. And this is in dollars, so inflation is not a factor here. Argentinian inflation is not a factor here. They had bottomed out in the middle of 2022 at under 20 cents on the dollar, so they were a little bit better, but they were not good. 30 cents, under 30 cents, about 27, 28 cents on the dollar. Um, basically, last week, uh, Argentinian bonds closed at over 70 cents on the dollar. So if you think about, again, as a sign of confidence in the ability of Argentina to pay its debts, we're close to break even. We're close to a buck. And that means that people are dramatically reassured. The markets are suggesting that they really do believe that Argentina is on the right path and that will be able to pay back its debt. And that is, that is huge. Um, so that is one measure of what is going on. Um, another is uh, when... Um, when Millet was elected in 2023, late 2023, he basically faced a massive uh, government deficit. A uh, massive government deficit. Uh, a, 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 the, the budget was unbalanced, and, and uh, the, the, there was huge spending, and there was very little revenue coming in. And he very, very quickly, by cutting government spending dramatically, and by tinkering a little bit with the tax system, including raising some taxes, has basically brought the, the, the government spending into balance. So Argentina has done something the United States has not done since, I think, the year 2000 or 99, 2000, the year 2000, which is have a balanced budget. And that's astounding for a country that just was spending, spending, spending like there was no tomorrow. And he did this very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. And uh, decisively, and uh, the right way, which is to cut spending, cut employees, cut overhead, reduce the scale of government. Not yet the scope, a little bit the scope, but not yet the scale. As a consequence of that, um, Argentinians uh, now uh, have, uh, you know, significant uh, foreign currency reserves. So uh, foreign currency reserves are uh, important because they have to use those foreign currencies in order to pay interest on the bonds and to, when the bonds expire, to, to pay bondholders back. Uh, bondholders want dollars. They don't want pesos. And uh, so uh, Millet, the central bank in Millet, the central bank he promised to abolish, but he hasn't yet, uh, has been able to increase the amount of dollars they have. And at the same time, the central bank is basically 
the growth of the money supply in Argentina right now is basically zero. The central bank is not printing any money. In other words, it is not buying any peso-denominated bonds in the market, which is the way in which you in inject money into the economy. It's not monetizing any government debt because the government is running a surplus. There is no debt to monetize. So that is huge for the Argentinian economy. And again, when I'm in Argentina in a week, I, hopefully I'll do a show from there and I will be able to let you know how it's going. In the meantime, as a consequence of this dramatic decrease in the amount of money the, the, the central bank is printing, is issuing, uh, while inflation spiked when Millet first into, came into power because of the massive devaluation of the currency that he did. Um, inflation is now at well below the rate when he took over, way, way, way below the peak rate, which was 25% a month um, uh, earlier, I think in January of this year. And it is now still high. It's about 3%, 2.7% a month, which is way too high. But it's way down and heading lower and heading lower. So inflation is significantly lower. It's back to where it was in the period between 2018 and 2022, before it kind of took the next jump upwards. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Argentinians have been uh, increasing their dollars held in their bank accounts significantly. And this is huge if Millet ultimately wants to dollarize the economy. He has to convince Argentinians that it is safe for them to have their savings in dollars in the bank, not in the mattress, but in the bank. And early on, you know, the first few months, there was a slight increase in deposits, uh, maybe from something like uh, 16 billion to maybe 18 billion. But then it kind of flatlined, it increased a little bit, slowly, slowly, slowly. But then, since this summer, it has exploded. And basically, dollar denominated deposits in Argentina, which is a real measure of confidence of the people in the future economic plan and the confidence of the people that this money will not be confiscated. These are dollars. This is real saving. Basically, has gone from, what was it, when he took off his $16 billion to over $32 billion, so more than double. And that's huge. That is huge. Um, the gap between the official rate, he still has capital controls. I think those will go away next year. But he still has capital controls, which where the government sets the exchange rate. But the difference between those capital controls and the black market is slowly shrinking. It's relatively low right now. And the peso is slowly being depreciated at 2% a month. I think 2% a month. And the black market is coming up. And so it's the value of the peso, and they're slowly converging. When they converge, supposedly is the time when he can get rid of the capital controls. It also opens up the possibility of then dollarizing and getting rid of the central bank. And this is all, all of this has been done. Now, granted, there's some bad news, right? Poverty skyrocketed in, in Argentina. 50% of Argentinians now are categorized as below the poverty rate. In spite of that, Millet has kept his popularity. Um, it's down a little bit from when he was elected, but it is still high for an Argentinian president, very high. The level of confidence in the government is at one of the highest points it's been. Again, it was higher when he was first elected. It's come down, but it hasn't come down by a lot. And given how much pain many Argentinians have suffered in the interim, this is why. Now, a lot of that pain is a consequence of the fact that Millet has not been able to do all the things that he would have liked to do. Privatize, cut government spending even more, tax reform, 
and, 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 and lots of other fundamental reforms to the Argentinian economy. And he hasn't been able to do that because the parliament will not cooperate. So all of this has been achieved in spite of the fact that Argentinian parliament is not cooperating with him. Not cooperating with him. Um, imagine if they were, and, and this is, I think, the goal ultimately for Millet. Millet's political party is very small. He has a coalition with the a centrist party, but even together, they control less than a third of the seats in parliament. He can't really get anything passed. Can't really get anything passed. Um, what Millet is hoping for is to do well enough over the next year and to keep his popularity high over the next year so that in the next Argentinian elections, I think either in late night 25 or early 26 maybe, he can feel the political party that will win a significant place in parliament. And then, either by itself, or, which is unlikely, but let's say form a coalition where he can actually pass his more radical reforms and get Argentina to be the kind of free economic country that it has the potential to be, it, you know, the, the kind of free economic country that I think he imagines it could be. Uh, so, we, you know, we've got a year to suffer through him having to deal with parliament. And then his hope is, and I'm not sure he can fulfill this, but his hope is that he can dominate parliament or, or get enough votes in parliament to be able to pass the rest of his reforms. So it will be interesting. We will see what happens. I'm excited about being in Argentina uh, next week to, to get a sense of it firsthand. Millet has been invited to the events that I'm doing. The probability that it actually comes is probably close to zero, but he was invited. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we will see.